Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Beaties. It's just another day at the office. Today is the 2nd of January, and I got 2022 down there, and it's not 2022 anymore. It's 23. So anyway, that's a correction for all of you. We're winding up inventory. Gretchen's tying some renegades, and I'm finishing up some wire wing streamers. For now, I want you to notice not the fly in the vise, but the box is behind it in the case. Let me go to the wide shot because that's part of the inventory that I'm working on. We have to do an end of the year inventory for tax purposes. And I'll just pull out a box. And I've already done this, but just to give you an idea of what we do is we have these boxes, large boxes of hooks. And I've got two, four, six, I've got 18 boxes of these filled with hooks, and they're in boxes of a thousand. There's a, as an example, this is a 4X long number four, thousand in the box, except it's got some writing on it. What we do is we weigh them when we get them. They got a thousand in them. And if we take a fistful of, of hooks out, and let's say that the box weighed 10 ounces when we started, and it weighs now nine ounces when we get done. We figure we took 100 hooks out and there's 900 left. Kind of a rough inventory, but that's the way you can keep track of hooks as we as we go along. We have to keep, take, keep track of them and all of the other inventory you see around the room for tax purposes every year. This may look like, like a lot of fun stuff here, but there's several hours involved of getting this all assembled just so we can put a few numbers on the tax forms. Well, I'm going to put this back right now into the case and we'll um, go to split screen where Gretchen's working on Renegade and she can tell you about that and I'll be getting workwise over here with uh, the wire wings. Well we have a box over here just kind of common flies mm -hmm. that we try to keep in inventory just in case we want to sell a few. Uh, we've got Royal Wolves, Parachute Adams, Renegades, Yellow Humpies, Guides Prince, Hare's Ear, and then, oh, just a bunch of miscellaneous um, hoppers and nymphs and, oh, like some lime trudes and just a few things like that. But the, the major ones are the Royal Wolf, Parachute, Renegade, Yellow Humpy, Knights Prince and Hare's Ear. And we size, size 12 through 20 in all of those. So my Royal Wolf and my parachute Adams were pretty good except for the 18s and 20s, but I don't have any Renegades left right now. So I decided I better tie Renegades. So that's what I'm doing. I'm starting out with the size 12 and I've sized some hackle here. And I'm on the second one. These, this has some pretty heavy stem. And I don't know, it's not a very good hackle. I don't think I'm gonna use it. This was, I got some hackle out of kind of a iffy cape. And so uh, I'll kind of work with it as I go. In other words, it's not the greatest hackle in the world. No, it doesn't. Would you know, we have an inventory of probably some of the best hackle of, of anybody that would be viewing this, except for maybe a fly shop that's fully equipped. And and she's using the some of the lesser stuff. Well, one of the problems that you run into with hackle, not too uncommon, is that the larger hackle in dry fly quality is more difficult to find than it used to be in years past. Anyway, you, uh, oh, you're working on the white on that front of that one, huh? Yeah, I'm doing yeah. about four wraps of each color. <clears throat> and uh, it's hard for me sometimes to tie renegades because they're just not um, as, what's the word I want to, they're not as pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough to make a pretty fly. Yeah, it's tough. But but when it comes to fishing, I have fished with renegades my whole life, and 
and I really like them as a, as a fishing fly. It was one of the flies that my dad tied all the time and we fished with. So I used to put a renegade on the end of a willow and that was how I fished a lot of the high country streams here in Idaho. And we did go to a few of the lakes too. There's some really great lakes up above. What I'm doing here is I've just finished the body and you saw that, that I put on a, a, just a thread, a dark thread rib on a green body and I'm attaching a pre-made wire wing um, wing application. We'll talk about building those wings later, but if you want to see how to build them, you can look uh, for from last Friday, uh, BT Fly Tying Friday, we did the Wonder Wing or the Wire Wing on that, or you can go to YouTube and find the same thing. Now I'm going to slip over here to the materials and just get a, a feather out of that. And For those of you who didn't watch this on Friday, I tied um, a parachute using fibers from a makeup brush. So that might be something you're interested in if you have trouble getting hair. If you're looking for alternate plans uh, or materials, that came from a friend of ours in Australia who does have trouble getting some of the materials that we have readily available here in the U.S., they're not quite so readily available in Australia. Not saying that they're not available, but getting deer hair in Australia or moose hair, not real easy unless you have it shipped from the U.S. because to my knowledge, there are no moose in Australia. At least I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, I'm back to just wrapping a hackle. I, notice you're, I want you to notice that I'm wrapping this hackle butt end first, not tip end like you normally do on a wet. And you'll see why here in just a minute. Number one, I want you to notice that I'm putting the, some of the fuzzy fibers on there from the base of the stem. That uh, kind of helps in the, in the overall uh, swimming of the fly. It looks, looks a lot, has a lot more action in the water. That's the word I'm looking for. And I'll just pull this up. I'll take one more turn here. And uh, I'm putting a little silver tag on the back of all of these. You're using flat tinsel for that, Gretch? Yes, I am. Yeah. Now I'll just pull the um, waist end of feather forward and just give it a quick snap. It comes loose. And I'll... Um, Get ready to put on a whip finish. Whip finish starting at the back of the head and each turn getting closer to the hook eye. That's a good whip finish. If you go the other way, it has problems. Of course, putting glue on the head solves all those problems, so you don't need to worry about it so much. All right, now I'll just trim off the waist here. For the thread and not the waist, but yeah, I guess it is waist until it goes on the next fly. And we'll get ready to um, put some glue on the head. I'm just using some uh, 3D printer resin that we bought on Amazon. I think you'll find a, a link to that on our website. And we buy that by the court for about $15 and it, as you're gonna see, it's pretty, pretty similar to UV glue. And uh, just uh, bring my UV light into play. And it looks like that's done. And I'll just brush this guy out a little bit. All right, and, and I've already got one in the, in the five mile bar pool swimming. So we're gonna give you a chance to take a look at it now. I'm gonna just keep an eye on this fly. I should have, I was, I was focused on the wrong thing. And anyway, that's the finished fly. You'll get to see another one here in a minute. I messed up and left it on the materials, but I'll move the materials camera over so you can see the fly swimming in the pool.
There we go. And there's a fly swimming in a five mile bar pool. You can see it makes a real, has a lot of motion in it. And it's just some junk wings that we put together uh, in the round rather than flat. Most wings are kind of flat and these aren't. Anyway, let's get back to the vise now. And I'm going to put another hook in the, in the vise and we'll uh, do another body. That last one was green. And uh, I've already got a bunch of a bunch of the um, red body ones already done, so I'll do a few more of the green. Now I want you to notice the way I'm doing the rib. I had just a little bit of white showing, and so I covered it up with the. That's a fly tire's trick. You just if it if you need to cover something up, a felt marker, felt tip marker really helps. So it looks a lot better now. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you another way of putting on a rib. And this is just a thread rib. You can do it with uh, tinsel as well, but we'll talk about that at, at another time. See, I just started the black thread. That's gonna be the rib. And then we're right behind that little short application of black thread. I'm gonna start my uh, Dan Weiss uh, Flex Nylon. It's actually a, a flexible floss. And if you have the uh, Danville uh, Nylon Flex or the Flex Nylon, uh, or you can get uh, Uni and it's a Uni Flex. Uh, I think it's Uni Stretch, I think it's called. And I suppose other, other companies have the same thing as well, but we haven't uh, worried about it. We always have Danville and that's what, we, what we've got, what we're using today. But you can see it puts down a really nice, smooth body and what i'm going to do is whip finish that body all right we'll pull that up trim it i'll set that aside now now i'm going to add the rib and then the rib becomes the tying thread once we get up to this the, to the front, and we'll just call that good. And I'll grab another pre-made wing. Lost my my tag here. Ugh. Tie that on. Now, what this wing is is just um, a couple of soft tackle feathers that are basically built into a dubbing loop of wire. And of course, and that makes them stay in the position that they are right there, as you can see. And it really gives them a lot of motion in the water. And now I'll just get back over here to the materials and I'll just move those materials back. Well, you already know what's back. You'll be seeing the fly every time I come to the materials. I'm just getting the feather, a feather for the soft tackle. And we'll come back. And what I'm gonna do now is I, I wanna make sure that I incorporate some of the fuzz at the base of that feather. It's gonna be kind of a thorax on this fly, if you will. In fact, let's go back to the if you look real careful, right behind that hackle in the front, you can see kind of a, a little bit larger area. And that is from the fuzz that we left on the feather. Fuzz that I'm leaving on the feather right now. That area right behind the hackle that you saw swimming in the water is this stuff right here. And I'm pointing to it with my scissor point. I'll just go ahead and tie that on. Now, I don't want that to pull out or break, so I'm just gonna pull it forward and anchor it down. Now I'll cut it off. Now I want you to notice that I'm leaving myself a lot of space because I need some space for, I guess you'd call it the thorax, but anyway, for this fuzzy stuff. I need that to build up. I need to have it be loose enough so that it has the ability to move in the water. 
That's what makes this fly so attractive to the fish is the movement in the water. Okay, now I just kind of stroke all these fibers back as I as I wrap towards the front. But the first the first two turns or more uh, is the um, fuzzy stuff at the base of the stem. And now we're just going to wrap hackle. And one last turn. Turn this back, wrap a thread head. Now I'm going to, I want you to notice that I'm holding the, the thread kind of back in my, in my, in my hand here, angled back. That's because I want to take this feather here and break it off. And if I don't do that, it's going to cause that thread to slide forward just a little bit. And I don't want that to happen. I want that thread to stay at the back of the head so I can do a good whip finish starting at the back of the head and working towards the hook eye. And I got one fiber that just didn't want to get with the program, and that's why we've got scissors. All right, now it's time for some UV glue. And we get our UV glue. It's actually 3D resin for 3D printers. And if you'll find a link for it on our website. Runs uh, $15, $18 a quart. Can't get this hackle to look like I want it to. What's happening to your hackle? Oh, it just doesn't look like I want it to. Sometimes they just don't want to be born, you know? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring my UV into light into the play here. And that finishes that fly. That UV is some sure some miracle stuff. I've got to tell you, after all the years of using regular toluene based. Ooh, it, this, this sure is a welcome thing. It's a, a lot easier on the respiratory system, I'll tell you. All right, this will be the last one that I do in the, with the green body. Um, remember, we were talking about making one of those with Chickaboo? Yeah, we have to give that a try. Yeah, I kind of... We were thinking that might be kind of a fun fly. To I'll, make. I'll, I'll give it a try here in just a minute. Start the body back there behind the black and wrap towards the bend of the hook. And keep wrapping the last little bit. Make the turn around and go back home, as we call it, back to the starting point. But in this case, it's um, the starting point. We're, all, we're not going to cover the black up yet. We're getting right there to the black. Take the whip finish tool, and now we're going to whip finish over the black. That makes a smooth body. And then that allows us to easily wrap the rib, which is the black thread. And there we go for that. I'm going to set that one aside for now. And the next one, we'll, uh, we'll do a red one. One of the things about using green with a black, with a green background, just doesn't work out really very well. Doesn't show up as good because of the camera, but we'll switch to orange to do the last here. So it'll have red, green, and, and orange bodies. Now let me get a wing, I'll put, bring a wing into play here. One of the things I want, I want you to notice, let's see if we can see it here. You can see the two feathers that I made that out of. They're kind of split apart. And now it's up to you as a fly tire if you want those to be standing up or more like the tail of a fish. And all you need to do is turn the wing to get it to the position that you want it at. And it's because it's, the wing is in the round.
I'll cut off the waste. Yeah, I know I'm cutting wire with my scissors, but when you buy scissor blades by the hundred, your job is to get the get the fly tied, not worry about whether you're cutting the stuff with what part of the blade. When they wear out, you get another blade. Drink a coffee there. Let's get over here and take another look at that fly swimming in the tank. Remember now, I'm looking for some feather with a lot of fuzzy on the on the base end, so I can have that. Act. I want you to look carefully at the at that fly there swimming in the in the current. And here's a feather with a whole lot of fuzz. We're gonna you. You can see that there's kind of a buildup right behind that hackle, and that's the fuzz from the base of the feather. Well, I've got a feather here with a whole lot of fuzz. And so I'm going to uh, have an even bigger thorax than normal. Because I want you to notice that I already got some fuzz attached from the wing. All right. So you, the fuzz from the hackle just blends into the fuzz from the wing, and that's what makes the thorax of the, of the fly, if you will. And streamers don't normally have thoraxes, but you can see what we're trying to accomplish here is... Uh, all right, there we go. Get the hackle pliers and start wrapping. I'm not happy with this white hackle. I'm going to get out a... Get out a different hackle? I got a number two grade here. So you're going to what, a number one grade or... Well, no, I'm getting out the number two grade. Oh, you're getting the good stuff after trying to use the stuff that was in the junk bin. Yes, I'm... Oh, I'm got it's it. just not... The, the stems appear to be um, just a little big. This is... Oh, this is a fine hackle. I don't know. This may not have any 12s on it, though. No, that's one of the problems yeah. with the um, with the whiting hackle is uh, it's absolutely fantastic for some of the smaller stuff. Now, I'm going to pull that thread back so I can pull this feather forward and just give it a snap and get rid of it. And now we'll go ahead and put finish starting at the back of the head, working towards the eye. You have any luck with that smaller hackle, Gretch? Yeah, I think I found right here in the center of this saddle. Uh huh. It's kind of a Christmas tree shape, though, so probably I'll just get the big stuff on the end and save the tips of it for smaller flies. Sure. Now let's get the. That's one advantage here. of starting with the big fly, then you can save the tips when you go down to a smaller size. Now there's a couple nice ones. That's gonna be an, a pleasure to tie with. I was just getting frustrated. I They looked okay, but it was taking too long. To oh, fuss geez. with it too much. Now there's, there's some nice hackle. We'll see how that works. Okay, and we'll... Uh... Put some UV light on the on the head. That one's good to go. By the way, I'm using because these are size 12 up here by the the eye. If you can see that, there we go. Up here by the eye, the fibers are longer on the stem. And so that's what I'm using for these 12s or this fuzzier, fluffier <coughs> peacock. I'm going to work my way down to the less fuzzy stuff when I get down to the 14s. And One of the things that I forgot to mention on the inventory, in fact, that's my completed inventory list. You wouldn't know that how many hours went into that. But anyway, that's, that's all of those numbers are going to end up going on the tax forms. But one of the things 
is the mileage. You know, keeping track of your miles is a is an important thing because we have a, a pickup, and I would say that pickup gets used about eighty percent for the business. But there are some personal miles that you drive. Well, this little thing right here used to be called the checkbook. Some people even write checks again today. But inside of this is an old address book. And those aren't addresses in there. Those are, I'm just using it as a, as a record keeping item. And it just, uh, as an example, I wrote down the mileage uh, for as of yesterday when I checked the mileage on all the vehicles of one January 23, um, 2022 miles driven. And then I put the number down and, and that number applies to uh, this form right here. <laughs> crazy as it is and this number is from last year this number is from this year and when you subtract them you end up with the miles driven and then how many of those miles were miles driven for business all the business trips are in here so whenever we start a trip we write down the mileage and the date and where we're going and when we get back we write down the mileage and uh, so that we have trip miles and that's something i've been doing for Jesus, since the 80s when I started guiding, because you're required to provide that information to the to the IRS. And this is one of the ways we found to keeping track of it. We've been through some audits, and this seems to be something that satisfies them. So there's probably forms out there for it, but why throw away a, a perfectly good address book that we're not using for anything? Because now our smartphones keep all that stuff. But I'll set that aside, and we'll get back to tying some flies. Oh, look at that. That's much better. Doesn't that look good? Oh, my goodness. It sure does. And look at the difference. Um, it's a lot fuller. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Well, it goes. To, it I, lays better. It, it, it goes to tell you that, uh, at least with Whiting Hackle, you get what you pay for. And I'm not even sure that other stuff you were using was Whiting Hackle. I, I, you know, that's just something that was hanging around. <laughs> We have a lot of stuff that just kind of hangs around in this tying room. Yeah, and in our travels through fly fishing, we pick up stuff all over the place. Okay, now I'm going to start my black thread. Just several turns just to kind of get it there. Now, what I'm using is the weight of the bobbin to keep the thread which is going to be the rib on the bottom of the hook. And so every time I wrap my floss around there, it's a, it's pushing the rib material towards the back, keeping it right smack on the bottom of the hook until I get almost to the end of the shank. And then I'm going to stop, trim off the waist and then make a couple more turns so that I can reach the shank, end of the shank. You can see that lays pretty nice, that that um, Danville nylon stretch. And you notice that it never gets a twist in it. It always lays flat. And that's the same for the Danville nylon stretch. You'll find that on our website. Or if you're a uni product person, uh, the, the uni stretch does the same thing. It allows you to put on a fast, smooth floss body using a bobbin, which makes it go on even faster yet. You may notice that the previous tie fly I tied, I put the uh, tag on one way, and now I'm wrapping this tag the opposite direction. And the reason for that is, is it depends on how it lays when I tie it on, and I I go to to the direction that allows the silver side to show not the gold side it's just because it really doesn't matter on this fly which way i'm wrapping that tinsel just want to make it sure that the silver shows if that makes any does that make any sense sure does i do like to kind of counter wrap it because then it's easier to tie it down and not lose it but sometimes it 
just as cranky. And if you do that, the wrong side is going to show. So now this winning application is out of a couple of really big feathers. I'm not going to be able to get any of the fuzz out of the feather without having the wing too long. And I don't want the wing to be too long. So I'm just going to trim this off. I'll get a little bit of fuzz out of it, but not much. And I'll just tie that in place. All right, there we go. <clears throat> and now I'm going to need a feather, though, with a lot of fuzz on it because I didn't put leave very much fuzz from my uh, from my wing. And here's one right here that's got quite a bit of fuzz. I'll just show you here in a minute. You see, it's got a um, pretty long feather, actually, with a, with a pretty good amount of fuzz right in this area here. Now let me uh, get, I want you to notice that the, the stem is fairly slender until it gets right about there and it gets pretty pretty heavy. So I'm going to oh, trim good. away in the waist, if you will, so I can tie down that part of the stem. That uh, peacock was showing stem rather than fuzz when I wrapped it the normal way. So I undid it and I'm counter wrapping it. And now it looks really nice. Uh, so, you know, I don't always do the same thing on every fly. You do what it takes to make the material lay right. That's right. Your job as a fly tire, we said it dozens and dozens of times, but your job as a fly tire is make the materials behave, not have the materials make you behave. All right, now I'm wrapping the, the actually the thorax of the streamer, as crazy as that sounds, out of this fuzzy stuff as I work my way forward. And see, I got uh, about three turns of that before I ran into the hackle fibers. By the way, this fly is not going to win any beauty contest, but it sure has got good action in the water. And you know what that results in. And, but I tell you, actually, it's a, it's a way of using up your big old hackle that you need to get rid of or you need to find a use for. You know, another place that make, turns in a good wire wing is pheasant body feathers. But anyway, um, this probably doesn't fish any better than a bunny leech or something like that. But, you know, they fish good. And this one fishes good, too. And it is made out of different materials. But the main thing about the bunny leech and this one is the motion in the water. I'll uh, pull back on that thread, pull forward on my feather and break it off and get ready to wrap the whip finish. That last fly was a little heavier hackle than I intended, but it's it was the same amount of turns. It's just a it's got a lot of denser barb count. Yeah, huh? a lot denser barb count. And that's one of the advantages of the of the really good quality whiting is that they that's why it gets the better grade is because of the higher barb count. Yeah, I probably could have used a th three grade. Number three instead of a two, but I didn't see one up there, so. Okay. And I'll just kind of rotate that a time or two to make sure that the glue is all leveling out. Now I'll bring the light in and continue to rotate. Well, that guy comes out. Looks like I've got about two more to go and we're gonna call it a day. I don't know how much time, but we, we try not to bore you guys too much with too much of this, but if it's not boring to you, let us know. If it's boring to, us, to you and want us to, you want us to stop, 
Well, go right ahead. We probably won't, but at least we want to hear from you. What you think, one way or the other. Things that you're looking for, too. Maybe there's some patterns. You know, we we tie just about everything under the sun. And who knows? It may be something that we could whip out on a Beaties at Work day. And <laughs> what happened there, Gretchen? Well, I just kind of lost control of my bobbin, and it just flipped over the, the hook and did another wrap. That's kind of cool, actually. Oh, okay, well, that's sometimes... <laughs> Now, if you wanted that to happen, it would never happen. Never happen, yeah. That hackle is getting a little short, the tip of it. So I'm going to put it to the side and use it for a smaller fly and pick up one of my bigger long saddles here and use it. Got a lot of flies out of that one little hackle. This, these long sign, hackles. Put on the rib. You know, we were talking uh, last evening about some things. You know, and one of the things that we've done over the years is we have published just a bunch of tips and tricks and fly tire magazine and in other magazines and we're thinking about taking those and republishing them in a book form so that uh, they'll all be in one place instead of having to dig through a stack of magazines to find what you're looking for you just go to the index of the of the book and look up how to do whatever you're looking for xyz it would fall into that category and the other thing we talked about was uh, was uh, the uh, articles we wrote for Fly Fishing America were basically um, a whole lot of favorite flies from different fly shops. And of course, a lot of those fly shops are not even in business anymore. I mean, the fly shop business is a pretty tough business to, to be successful in in today's environment. And anyway, we've got about 400 of those. So they, We've got several books of things we could do that. So we may be doing, maybe working on another book. You just never know. Fuzz that wind up a little bit. And now I'll. Okay, set that in place and get ready to wrap it. The difference of why I'm tying this fly counter wrap the, the peacock is because you want that stem area to face forward so that you cover it up with the next wrap. If you if it's facing back, then it it shows and it's not a nice full body. So that's the reason I, I do that. And the last two flies I've had to do that because I think it's because of the side of the peacock that I'm taking the hurl off of. You probably better keep talking for a bit. I cut my thread, Gretch, and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> you want me I'm to distract so, him? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I was so en engrossed in what you were saying, I didn't pay attention. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> well, this, uh, this hackle is marginal. It looks a little short. I think I better put it aside and get a, another one out. Let's see how this is. Okay, now I'll see if I can recapture that without. I'm probably the, the the webby part of the fly. I'm probably using more of the web on these than I would, let's say, on a oh a wolf or something because uh, this is a, a different fly it, it's going to be more maybe kind of just on the subsurface maybe it's not going to be a probably a real high floating fly we'll see or it doesn't have to be let me put it that way well, that, but this one's really got long fuzzy fibers i have uh, 
hadn't planned on getting that long of a, well, it'll be just fine. As I say, these are not pretty flies. They just. These are one of us are tying really pretty flies today. No, today is uh, an ugly fly day. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Well, I think your flies, those are prettier than these renegades. Renegade is just a, a workhorse. We showed how to tie these wire wings last Friday. And a friend of ours in Nebraska liked him. His name is Mike Kelly. He's with Project Healing Waters there in Nebraska. Sent us some pictures of the ones he tied over the weekend and planning on using them for bass. Should be really good for that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got one spot right here at the top of the head. I didn't quite do a very good job of covering up the hackle. And I see a little bit of the hackle color showing through. So I'll take my felt tip marker. Now, you'll never know. Um, did Mike put legs on those for bass or not? No, he just he just did a, a straight wire wing. Okay. We talked about Friday, we talked about a little bit about putting some legs on it uh, to get the get some leg action. And I think if you were maybe doing it for crappie, maybe you'd want to do that. Yeah, any of the any of the warmer water fish I think would really go for it. And I think I can tell you, I know for a fact that the brown trout in the fall on the Yellowstone and Madison like those wiggly legs a lot because I've I've done them. Okay, let's uh, get ready to put on our glue. I'm on my eighth fly. I'd like to get at least a dozen of these twelves done. Okay, I'll rotate that to get it all evenly distributed. Ugh. Bring my UV light into play. I totally missed that somehow. Lay that one down and it looks like I've got one more wing and that's it. So that'll be the end of, end of the presentations for today, I guess. I wrap that tinsel a little past where I want it to show. It just makes it easier to tie it down good because it does have a tendency to want to unwrap. And then I just bring my thread back over the top of it to just right above where the throat of the barb is. And uh, put on my brown hackle. One of the things we do with hackle that I might talk about a little bit is you want a little bit of bare stem on your first wrap because that allows the hackle to lay right uh, and not point backwards on that first wrap. In my black thread that I've been making the rib out of has got a few twists in it, so I'm just kind of flattening it out a little bit before, before I wrap it as a rib. It'll make a little bit better rib application. I want you to notice here, I haven't pointed it out before, but when I reach the front, this spot right here is where we whipped finish the, the floss. And when I get to that point, I double wrap over that because that's the thorax area and I want it very well anchored. All right, we'll uh, put that in right there. Tie it down. Now I did it again. Let's twist this a little bit. There we go. 
Now I've got that rib going forward. And I think I'll try to get a little bit smaller feather this time instead of such long fuzzies. I better go to the other end of the cape. In fact, I'm going to bring this back to the cape so you all can watch me dig out a feather. Now, what I did before that one that was so terribly long was clear up here. And uh, I think I'll get down in here and get a little bit smaller feather. It's going to have shorter fuzzies, if you will. I think I'll grab that guy right there. Looks like it's got a little bit shorter fuzzies on it. That first line, when I forgot to make the change from the materials camera to the vice camera, I get so doggone used to tying on the camera with Gretchen making my changes for me. And now she's over at her vice working. And one of the things I have to get used to is actually doing my own camera work when we're doing this, along with tying the flies. That fuzzy stuff is actually chickaboo, isn't it? That's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a type of chickaboo. It's a chicken and it's marabou. So it's chickaboo. <laughs> And I mentioned it before, but I've got a real love affair with that soft tackle and chickaboo pelts from Whiting Farms or from any chicken for that matter, because they make some really good flies as far as motion in the water, which equates to more fish to hand. I'm going to let me go back here. I had one that stuck forward like that and I started to wrap and it was pushed it forward and I didn't don't want to do that. It's always best to make sure your your fibers are laying back with each turn, not trying to cap recapture them and make them right later. I'll pull these fibers back, wrap my thread head, which is just thread in front of the feather after I tied the feather down with oh, two or three turns to anchor it. And now I'm anchoring it from another direction by wrapping back against it with a jam knot. Now let's find our, our feathers in there. There it is. Turn that off. And I'll go ahead and Whoops, I forgot throw a my, finish in there. Forgot my tinsel. Ooh, hoo, hoo, almost made a mistake. Let me there. try that over. I think I'm going to have to cut another piece off. No, had a couple of uncooperative fibers that didn't want to get with the program. I still had one that got caught. Okay. Get my glue out here. And we got the glued head, put the cat back on. Rotate this so it kind of levels out. Bring the UV into it. Set the glue. And I guess we'll call that a day. 
And even though this is what we usually use for our BTs at work and also for fly tying Friday, we're here every Friday. Except, well, for a few days, we'll be... Uh, Except for this Friday. Busy. This Friday, we're at a show here in Boise. Yeah, so right. we're going to try to live stream from the, from the floor. But for today, thanks for joining us. And for now, that's a wrap. <laughs>